There's a line of a thousand people waiting for the bathrooms, while a town-sized army of costume-clad figures vie for dealer swag. You're surrounded by a small group of stormtroopers, anime characters, and two folks in steampunk all offering you drinks. What do you do? Do you possess the skills necessary to survive your first convention? That's how we roll. 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 That's Welcome to the Goblin's Corner. My name is Eric. And I'm Matt. And tonight, we're talking about surviving your first convention. That's right. Con season is upon us. Coming up, actually now. Right now. Yeah. MomoCon just happened. We got some stuff going on in July and August. September, of course, Dragon Con, Labor Day weekend, folks. If you Absolutely. haven't been there. And all the other conventions that people go through throughout the summer and various times of the year. And we felt tonight would be a great time to tell you how to survive the first convention you've ever gone to. Yes. Or, so, you know, in general, it's just good advice for everyone. But it's really good advice for people who haven't made it to a convention before. Absolutely. So this evening, that's what we're going to talk about. How to survive your first convention, how to take care of yourself and everybody else around you, and honestly, how to be a good person at a convention. Which, <laughs> or in general, in some cases. In life, in <laughs> yes. general. So if you haven't yet, hit that like and subscribe button. Help us get our show out to more people and get notified when amazing episodes come your way. And hey, if you're listening to the show, give us a review on iTunes, Podchaser, or wherever you listen to our podcast. It'll make a difference. It will. Get more people listening to the show or watching. Yes. Yeah. So as we mentioned, Con season is upon us. Ready the flask and backpacks, right? Yeah. And to that end, we are going to give you some pro tips to surviving your first convention. That's right. Matt and I have been to many conventions over the years, gone on probably several decades at this point. Yes. And we have learned several skills. By the way, none of this is new information. No. It's all old, ha old tricks, old hat stuff that... You probably already know, but we've condensed it into an easy digest format. And we're also putting it all in one place instead of you having to hunt down all of this advice. 100%. So let's talk a little bit why, why we are kind of deviating from our normal storytelling podcast and focusing on surviving a convention. The reason we're talking about this first and foremost is that we want all of you to be safe. Yes. You could get hurt at a convention. There's a lot of people. Depending upon the convention, there's 100,000 people or more sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And we want you to have fun and be safe while we're doing it. We want you to enjoy the whole experience as well. Depending upon the convention you go to, and we know there's a lot of different types. Yes. You could have anything from a dance party. Yes. To a room party. To... Public party. A public party. <laughs> to something that's not a party. Right. We, we've heard that something that's not a party exists. Ostensibly. Yeah. And, and so we want you to make sure that you have fun and enjoy the whole thing. Not only that, in addition to having fun, we want what, Matt? We want you to suffer as little as possible. Yes. <laughs> because you will suffer at a convention if you do it wrong. Oh, absolutely. 100%. You can ask several of our friends who partied a little too hard or maybe they didn't hydrate. Didn't get enough sleep. Yeah. And so we'll go into all the ways, you know, health tips, safety tips, and so forth. Sure. And what we like to generally refer to these traits to take care of yourself and others is consponsibility. Yeah. We've made this word up. Yes. It probably already existed. It 100% did, but now you all know it as well. Now you know consponsibility. So what are the basic rules of consponsibility, Matt? Rule one, consent. Always. Yes. Inclusivity. Mm-hmm. Support. And then health and safety tips. That's right. So- We'll go into some consent and inclusivity tips. We'll do a little bit about health and support. And then some general safety tips, which, by the way, are safety tips for when you're traveling to any large city. Yeah. But in any group of people. What? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about consent and inclusivity first. This, I would say, is the most important rule. Yes. That you should learn in life, really. Yes, 100%. <laughs> this, is, this is life lesson. If you don't know this, start learning this. Consent is always required. Yeah. And for the purposes of con, we're talking about touching, taking pictures, literally anything that involves someone else. Right. If you can't ask for the photo, don't take the photo. Asking is expected and encouraged. And if in doubt... 
don't do whatever you were going to do, right? Yeah. Don't do the behavior. Depending upon the con, we've been to several cons where there's more than just photo taking. Sure. Again, consent is definitely required for those type of conventions. Yeah. Now, there are times where consent is implied. If you were at a group photo shoot, then it's implied you're going to get your photo taken. Literally, the purpose of where they are is to get their pictures taken. We're not talking about interrupt the photo shoot for your personal consent. That's why they're there. Yeah. But if there's a guy in an Iron Man suit, he's obviously at the uh, snack bar. He's getting a sandwich. Don't roll up on him while he's got, you know, broccoli in his teeth. Let Iron Man eat a shawarma. Yeah. Let him eat a shawarma and then go do whatever he's doing. Yeah. Right. Additionally, and this is just kind of a useful rule in general, whenever you go anywhere, but particularly in conventions, conventions tend to be big, right? Yes. Uh, even the small ones tend to be take up multiple floors a lot of times. Yeah. So do some recon before you actually head to wherever you want to go. Plot your course out, right? One of the things that both of us think you should do is take a couple of hours, a few hours, however your brain works best, mm -hmm. And just float through the con, right? Just experience the ebb and flow of a bunch of like-minded people enjoying themselves. What that does is it will lead you to a bunch of different places. You'll familiarize yourself with where you are, but also... Allows you to orient. Yes. So that you can, if you get lost, you kind of know how to get back. It also kind of gives you a feel for the mentality and the theme of the convention, yeah. right? And just the general vibe. Yeah. If it's a party vibe, cool. If if you're not going for that sort of thing, maybe you skirt the edges of that. Cons are generally divided into a couple of things. Panels, tracks, and then, like you said, mentioned, a general mentality or theme. And parts of the convention might have a, you know, a very chill vibe. Some of them might have a very rowdy vibe. And so you want to kind of float through the whole thing. We generally like call it walking the con. Right. And we just walk through the con, see what's going on, and then we'll kind of circle back with our friends, decide what we want to do, and then go do it. Yeah. Sometimes, also, you need to let the con see you. It's not just about you seeing the con. You need to let the con know that you're there. A little showboating, maybe? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Next up, we've got managing your expectations. And you should. You are not going to be able to see every single panel. You're not going to be able to see every single celebrity, event, party. Yeah, you can't do it all. There's one of you. You have one body to work with. So pick the things that are most important to you. Prioritize those things. Yes. I would also suggest to have a backup plan with that. And we'll get to like maybe planning your convention when we start talking about that later. But it is important, like have a primary thing you want to do. Have a secondary thing you want to do. That sort of thing. And you have to understand a lot of cons are packed and you may not make your panel. You should have a backup just in case. But also, if you can't make it to either of those, that's another good time to just roam. float through the con. Roam around, see yeah. what you get into. Get into some trouble. Get into something interesting. Yeah. Meet some people. I'm going to tell this for people who have never been to a convention before. And Dragon Con's a perfect example of this. San Diego Comic Con's another good example. They are f huge yes when i say that they're huge i want you to de i'm going to describe this scenario we're at the hyatt in okay. atlanta yes. and we're going to get to the marriott we're going to get to your room at the marriott marquee by the way that's across the street you go down the stairs on one hotel you go up the stairs on the other hotel you can take the habit trail but it's going to be a thousand degrees and filled with people yes now when it's not convention season it takes about a minute to two minutes to walk across the street sure. Depending upon the light. Right. When it is convention time, it can take an hour, hey, 30 I, minutes probably. Yeah. I mean, now, once again, a lot of times they'll have the streets blocked off and it will take you 30 seconds to go across the street mm -hmm. and 45 minutes to go through the habit trails. Yeah. So you got to think about, like, you got to plan that stuff yeah. out. This is why we want to say, get some recon, yes. see how long it takes to get everywhere. This is particularly important if you've, you're in a panel, you want to get to the next panel and you've got 20 minutes, you may not make it. Yeah. Actually, 100%. you're not going to make it because you're going to have to be there an hour before the panel. Right. Just think about that. Speaking of which, what brings us to our next point. Yes. Expect long lines for everything. Expect to queue. Bring a snack. Bring some playing cards. Bring a friend. <laughs> kill, kill the time. Yeah, be ready to kill the time sometimes. And also, some of the best 
times I have had at any convention is hanging out in lines, meeting new people. Do yeah. not be afraid to strike up conversations with people. When we were at Dragon Con last year, I was at the panel waiting. Matt was doing something else. I was hanging out, had my, my Goblin's Corner t-shirt on, which if you see us at Con, we'll have our Goblin's Corner t-shirt on, folks. At least one of the days. Someone came up to me, talked about it, ended up, they started listening to the show as well. We started talking. We started talking about D&D. Yeah. This is waiting for Monty Cook, actually. Yeah. And- Ends up now we're now we're friends, right? <laughs> How cool is that, right? Made a new friend immediately. I've had friends for at this point thirty years just because I struck up a conversation in line. I believe it, or nearly thirty. Here's another pro tip we would advise: if you know who's presenting in the subject matter of the panel, have a couple of questions planned ahead of time, just in case you get called on, so that it doesn't take forever and you stand up there looking like a jackass. Yes, nobody wants to wait. While you're trying to fumble out a question for someone, particularly the presenter, right? they're not going to tell you that, but they don't want to listen to it. If you've got a couple of questions, then while you're in line, if somebody asks one of them, you have a backup question. Mm -hmm. If somebody also asks the backup question and you don't have a follow-up question, just leave the queue. It's fine. Everybody's going to be like, oh, dope. Their question got answered. Yeah. And they kept it moving. You don't have to stay in the line and when they call on you, oh, he already answered my question. Yeah. That no, you're good. Don't be that guy. Also, in terms of consent and inclusivity. Try something new. Yeah. <laughs> just, just Many conventions have something for everyone, particularly the larger ones. So go see something outside your comfort zone. If you're into anime, go see something else that's not anime. If you're into sci-fi, go see something that's fantasy related, right? If you're into, I don't know, not meeting people, go meet some people. <laughs> yeah, I, the thing is, is you have no idea how much crossover between a lot of these genres and a lot of these hobbies until you go and meet some different people. Also, new points of view are good for you. Yeah, you get all walks of life coming into a convention Everybody's excited about being there. Yeah. That's the fun part about that. And again, I'm excited. I cannot stress this enough. Talk to people. Go and just talk to somebody. Strike up a random conversation with someone. You know what's really fun? Go around singing Men Without Hats, We Can Dance. And I can guarantee you, if you skip through the hallway, someone else people will, will start skipping they behind will break you. Break into song. 100%. We haven't done that much <laughs> i was i was like really i don't <laughs> think people believe that I, yeah we've done i feel that. like people know that's we, not true we might have done that at least one or two cons so someone's into what you're into you can make lifelong friends if you just walk up strike up a conversation right that's what this place is for yeah until you've seen a 200 deadpool conga line you don't know anything about anything yeah, absolutely no judgment and this is another thing to stress again talking about consent inclusivity this is open to everyone so if you have a problem with that yeah don't go don't, don't go, go. And that is not to say if somebody is actively being a bigot in your presence, you should be like, oh, well, that's fine. No, no, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, is there's going to be all types of people there and you can walk away from any conversation that you don't like the direction of. Yep. And if somebody's being a bigot, get security. Go tell right? somebody. That's, that is not your fight to get into. Yeah. The whole point of a convention is to not be a and have fun safely. Yeah. So if someone's being a d let somebody know. Yes. There is staff there for that reason. Yep. Now, here's one <laughs> that, you know, there's a sport to it, but there's a time to stop. Yes. Don't scare the non-con goers. Yeah, don't scare the mundanes. Right. Don't be a d to the hotel staff or the con staff. They will remember you. Yes. Because of who we know, many of the people who work conventions work all the conventions. Yeah, they work at many conventions. In a particular area. So if you go to one con and you're an asshole, they will remember you. Yes. If you meet a bald man named Vinny, don't mess with Vinny. Be nice to Vinny. It's a good rule across the board. Be kind to the con staff. Most of the time, they are volunteers. They are not getting paid to put on this convention for you. Yeah, they don't have time to deal with your <laughs> So be nice. And shouldn't have to. And they shouldn't have to, right. And now we're going to break a little bit. 
We'll get to the support and health in just a second because we've got what, Matt? Got the question of the week. Okay. What's the question of the week this week? It's going to be a little con-oriented. Okay. If you could cosplay an original character, what cosplay would you put together? Interesting. I have two answers for that. Shocking. I know. The first I've wanted to try, I just haven't had the nice robes built for it yet. Okay. I want to be a Red Wizard of Thay. Sure. I'm already bald, yeah. so all I need yeah. really is the head tattoos. Maybe some, some badass makeup I, and stuff like that. I can draw the head tattoos on that. Let's do it. Because I actually, I know what most of them mean just due to my long history with Forgotten Realms. I actually have in my basement some lightning struck wood from nice. the tree at my old house. Yeah. I remember it got struck by lightning and just split and I took some of the wood. So I have a branch that's been lightning licked. You can even see the lightning arc down some of the grain. Nice. I would love to turn that into like a wizard staff. Sure. With a little bit of woodworking. And then just have a nice robe. It'd be great, right? Because you yeah. just kind of stroll around as a red wizard. It's easy. Easy. Easy costume to get it's, into. It's not too hot. Yep. It's very important in the summertime in Atlanta. Yes. And the other one is actually something that I'm going to be doing this year, hopefully, which is I have been playing a lot of Cyberpunk 2077. Sure. And I would like to have my Cyberpunk Street Sam with my robot arm that I'm going to have. Nice. And so I've actually bought some of the materials this year. Look for the pictures, folks. So if you see a guy walking around with a cyber arm with blades, with a cool drink in his hand, it's probably me. Indeed. What about you? What would you do? I have a couple answers also. I would like to do a Shadowrun Street Shaman mm. with like the smart link glasses and glove and the the blue woad face paint as like a Celtic bear shaman. We could totally do that. That'd be pretty easy. I'd like to do that. And also, uh, I have a theory for a water wizard where you do the entire staff in resin. resin. Like blue resin with maybe like some swirls. Some, and some actually put some fish and like small fish yeah. in it and stuff. That would be awesome. You know what would be neat is... Uh, usually when you're doing resin, you want to like heat it so the bubbles get out. But mm -hmm. I would say like- just, Leave the bubbles. Yeah. Mix it up, get it nice and frothy, and then let it kind of bubble up. That would be pretty cool to do the staff. The resin, you may have to brace it with something. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But that's kind of cool. I like that idea. I, I love the concept of it. You should do it. You could do a fire staff the same way. Just do it in flame col colors and drop a uh, LED, mm. a spinning LED in the bottom of it. Oh, that would be kind of fun. And a butt cap, just fit it on, just like they do with lightsabers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Of course, we're always interested in your answer to the question of the week. And if you have one, hit us up at Gobbles Corner on Twitter, or you can find us on all of the social media channels that Matt generally posts to and I sometimes comment on. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, just comment down below. Down below. That's, that's literally what the comment section is for. Yeah. So, as we mentioned, surviving your first convention is very important, and we want to make sure that you are safe and you have a lot of fun. So now let's talk a little bit about some support and health things that you can do so that you, A, don't get sick, and B, you help out your friends, right? Sure. Let's first off talk about planning. Okay. Depending upon how your brain works, you probably want to have some plan of attack for the convention. Yes. What are we talking about when I say that, Matt? Well, for one thing, we're talking about attire and costumes. Yep. If you are the kind of person that gets stressed out because of organization, find a methodology that allows you to organize all of your cosplays. If you're going to be one of those people that's got like eight and you're going to wear two a day or <laughs> like go ahead and plan out the entirety of your wardrobe a week in advance. Yeah. So that that stress dissipates. And I say this for myself as well as for anybody else as a procrastinator. I am a terrible procrastinator when it comes to creating costumes. I, 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 I just am. Yeah. I know this. And I always tell myself, I never follow it, but I'm going to tell you guys to do this, <laughs> is go ahead and make your costume with the assumption that you will have one to two weeks less time it takes to make. So if you have three weeks to make your costume, you actually only have an, a week or two. Yes. Things come up. Assume they're going to. They will. And plan accordingly. Additionally, you need to schedule a time to take a break because, again, we're from the South. It is hot and muggy in the South 
pretty much until winter time. Yes. And if there is a convention anywhere in the South, or honestly, anywhere, anywhere, and you're wearing armor or anything that has multiple layers, you are going to die of heat exposure if you do not plan to get chilly somewhere fast. Yeah. Uh, heat exhaustion can ruin your con. Heat stroke can ruin your life. Yeah. Don't do either of those. Take your breaks. Cool down. Do what's necessary to take care of yourself. We saw a guy uh, a couple years ago in a Godzilla suit. Now, I'm not talking about the regular Godzilla suit, but like no, the full rubber one. The full rubber one. It was it was magnificent, my friends. It was incredible. It was like nine feet tall, and he had a handler with him, mm-hmm. and that person was leading the costume wear down the hallway. And about halfway down the hallway, person stumbles because that thing did not have any AC or ventilation built into it, and the person collapsed. Yep. Had to take a break. Yeah. Cooling vests, if you if you can get your hands on it, it's a little water pump with cool water that you put in there. It circulates around your body, cools you down. There's lots of ways. Look about building in them in. Uh, fans, like computer oh, yeah. fans. I went as the Riddler one year, which is just a suit, right? And it's like, it's not a big deal, right? We were walking around, having a good time, partying. Halfway through, I had to take all of it off because it was just too hot. It's a three-piece suit in Atlanta in the heat. Can't deal with it, man. I get you. Also, plan about meals. You will need to eat. Yes. Bring snacks. High protein, low sugar, especially if you're going to be drinking. Take care of yourself. We don't want to hear about any of you falling out because you just realized you haven't eaten in three days. Yeah. Now, we also suggest creating a con survival kit, and we may do a full episode on this at some point soon, but what that includes is just a couple of things that you take with you at all times to make sure that you don't pass out from dehydration or you have the necessary things to fix your costume when it breaks while you're walking down the line. Yeah. What does a con survival kit consist of, Matt? It consists of something to hold your survival kit in. So like a backpack or whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, my bag of holding. Yes. I I take it with me everywhere. It doesn't always contain all of these things, but for con, it contains literally everything and on this list. (laughs) Booze, at least for us. Yes. We always bring booze and that's just how we do it. But your con may vary. Yeah. And that is at conventions where that's okay. Right. Yeah. Check with the laws. Yeah, we are not telling you to break local laws or convention rules or any of that. Always bring a first aid kit, even if it's just a small one. Someone's going to get hurt or you're going to get hurt. You don't want to be in a mass of people and it's going to take 20, 30 minutes to get to a medic. Neosporin, a few Band-Aids, maybe a couple of gauze patches and some medical tape. Call it. Yeah. Anything you need more than that, you need to call a medic. Should also have a costume first aid kit. And Matt, aside from duct tape, what does that include? A little sewing kit Mm -hmm. goes a long way. If you're the kind of person who is very uh, costume oriented, I know people who carry around hot glue guns. That I do, in fact, carry a hot glue gun with my costume first aid kit. Yep. I know people who carry around paints, like small paint supplies in case uh, like armor gets scratched or something like that Mm -hmm. and they can just drop a little dollop on, paint it on, smear it on, and call it. Anything that can help you, especially with you or the people you know's costumes, if something goes wrong. And you don't have to necessarily carry that with you at all times. At least have it in your room. Now, I carry the the sewing kit because it's small and light, right? I carry that with me at all times. Some fabric glue also works wonders as well because it dries fast. And if you get a tear, you just put it on there. Or even double-sided tape. I was just about to say, the double-sided fabric tape is fantastic magic stuff. If you don't have double-sided tape, my friends, a couple of safety pins and some duct tape works wonders. Yep. We'll talk more about a con survival kit as well. (laughs) But in addition to some booze, some first aid, maybe some things to fix your costume, we also have... The two big ones, snacks and water. Yes. You have to eat and you must hydrate. Even if you're not in our climate... You still have to hydrate. Everybody requires water to live. You're going to start having fun. You're going to forget to eat. You're going to forget to drink, most importantly. You will get dehydrated. You will get hungry and hangry. And particularly if it's a big convention, it's very possible that the bars may be closed or the restaurants may be closed or just really full. Yeah. You're not going to be able to eat. Yeah, it could take literal hours, especially if you're at peak times. Yep. And finally, and this is something that I definitely recommend, particularly, again, 
if you're waiting in line, mm-hmm. something to read. Yep. So maybe your Kindle or a book, a card game that can fit in your pocket, whether it's just literally some bicycle cards or a magic card set or whatever. Yeah, some dice. I mean, we're gamers, so obviously yeah. dice is always in our pocket. I will think absolutely nothing about running a, uh, a one-shot while in a line. I don't care. I'll give it a shot. We'll see how far we can get. So those are just a couple of examples in terms of like a survival kit. Assume your panels will change by the daily. A lot of cons have an app. Check it out often. But one of the things you have to keep in mind is panels are celebrity-based. Celebrities have schedules that are based around their shooting schedules and things like that. The weather somewhere else in the world will influence could literally influence the panel you want to watch tomorrow. So check it often. A lot of times they'll also move people around from different rooms. So the panel you might be waiting for for two hours actually isn't the panel you're waiting for. <laughs> check that app, folks. Yep. Let me tell you, this is, I can't tell you how many times I've waited in a panel and gone, oh, well, this is the one I'm supposed to be in. So I guess I got to go do something else or Watch a panel that I wasn't intending to watch. Sometimes just write it out. It might be really interesting. That's a very good point. Yeah. Also, in terms of support and health, we follow the 135 rule. Yes. This, this is the number one rule that you need to know. And 135, by the way, is the minimum amount that you need. What are we talking about when we say the 135 rule, Matt? One shower a day. That is, again, the minimum. Three meals a day. Yep. And five hours of sleep. And I'm going to tell you this, folks, because some of you are not going to follow the 135 rule. Those of you who missed that one will definitely smell like B.O. Yes. I have been to many conventions, and I really someday want somebody to play the Febreze Fairy who walks in <laughs> I've seen and it. sprays people down. Yep. Because y'all get funky waiting in line. Take your showers. And this is... One of the rules we talk about when we talk about minimize suffering. It's just consponsible, folks. Yep. One shower a day, three meals a day makes sense, five hours of sleep. You're going to be partying. You're going to get tired. You don't want to get sick. Yeah. You got to get some sleep, folks. Another rule that we like to follow is take your vitamins. If this is a large convention, go ahead and assume you're going to get sick. Maybe not from the Congoers, maybe just from. Wearing yourself out because you're having so much fun, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you don't get COVID. Hopefully you don't get a cold. But you never know, right? Assume you might get sick. Sure. Take your vitamins. Bring a mask. Yeah. If mask rules are up, do the mask rules. Yeah. And if you have any immuno issues at all, understand you're going to have a large group of people in a small area. Just wear the mask. Or take it outside. Yeah. And that's that's what a lot of people do, too. If, If you're immunocompromised... Limit your socializing to maybe outdoor areas so that it's not as bad. You don't get exposed as much, right? Sure. Plan for downtime. Yes. You will 100% get sick of people at some point in the convention. Even me. At some point, you're just going to be like, all right, I'm done. I need to sit in a room by myself for five minutes and chill. This is especially true if you have sensory overload issues and if you're just an introvert. You need to recharge your batteries. You need to get someplace quiet before you reach the brink of just not being able to function anymore. Yep. So find a place, scout ahead. If you don't have a room, find a place maybe at the convention that's kind of quiet. Find a little corner that you can sit down, chill by yourself, recharge, go back into it. And some, some conventions have sensory rooms where literally you can just go in, they'll close the door, And it's quiet, it's dim, and generally there's only one or two people in there who are not talking to each other. They're just in there recharging. Another pro tip, if you want a place to recharge and you can't find a place, a lot of cons uh, have movies playing in a room someplace. Mm -hmm. And aside from the movie, it's quiet because people are watching the movie. Yeah. Put your headphones in. Don't even listen to it. There you go. One final note on support and health. It is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Do not try and pack a year's worth of partying into the first day of your convention. You will be wrecked for the rest of the weekend. We have literally seen people passed out in the hallways on Thursday nights. Yes. Of a weekend convention. Yeah. It started on Thursday. They're passed out already. Yep. They have now ruined their weekend. Because they just... Tried to pack it all in. We know you want to get at it, so get at it, but get at it responsibly. 
get at it safely. Yes. Which brings us to our final point, safety tips. If you can, get a con buddy so that you can have safety words in case you're in an unsettling situation. A con buddy is very useful. And what are we talking about when we say a con buddy? Could be your friend that goes with you. Could be a friend you just made that you trust. Yeah. It should be somebody that you trust that you know won't try to mess you over if you're, say, a little too drunk or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe you're just tired. You don't want someone to take advantage of you. Find a person. It's just like going out on the town, right? Sure. Travel in packs if you can. Yeah. It's a, it's a harsh world out there. Let people know where you are. Let your con buddy know where you are. Yes. If you're in a panel, let someone know that you're in that panel. If you're out in a room party, particularly in room parties, mm -hmm. let somebody know you're at that room party yeah. so that they don't worry. If you're dancing, out to eat, whatever you're doing, just check in every hour, whatever. Have a schedule. Stick to it as best you can. Some of these are also good for just Living in the big city. Yeah. Some of them are just good life rules in general. I would say all of these are life rules. What's, yeah. what's the next one here in terms of safety tips, Matt? Don't walk alone outside of conventions, especially if you're in an unfamiliar city. Assume that if you're in a convention, everybody in the city knows that you're here for the convention, particularly if you have like a tag on. They can spot suckers. Yes. They will try to grift you. They try to grift us. Sure. You know? Even when we're not grifters are grifters. They grifters, don't care if you're local. Yeah, d d even when it's not convention time, someone's going to kind of roll up on you, try to grift you, right? This, you just got to expect that in a city that hosts conventions. It happens all the time. Absolutely. Don't take unfamiliar things from others unless they've been vetted. Yes. And this is including drinks. Yes. I hate to say this because we pass out drinks at cons all the time. I will tell you the method I use so that people understand that I'm a decent human. I will not pour a drink for someone that I will not also take a drink from that same bottle in front of them. Yes, so that they know it's not something else. Exactly. Here's the way to do it, ladies and gentlemen. You hold the cups, they pour, you watch the pour from the same bottle, you hand them their shot, and you take yours. That way you can make sure there's nothing in the cup, mm -hmm. and you can make sure that they're willing to drink from the bottle they're pouring for you. Yep. And that is the safest way to handle that. Another safe way, make sure the person pouring the booze is your friend. Sure. Another thing, if you're in a big city, you're at a hotel, don't tell unfamiliar people what room you're in. Yeah. Your if, friends obviously are different. Sure. And it'll help them check in on you if they know where you're staying. Right. Again, just a life lesson. You don't want people knowing exactly where you are, particularly randos that just might happen to show up because you were in a really nice costume. Sure. And that has happened to many friends we know. Yes. Most cons have hotel security and con security. Know where you can go if something happens. Yes. And again, all of this follows under doing the appropriate recon for the hotel and the convention, right? There's going to be specific areas. Usually they're marked. Yeah. You also might be a good idea to mark where the medics are as well in sure. case someone gets hurt it may not even be you you might find somebody that's hurt yeah take them to the medic right that's a good thing to do that's con responsible folks yeah it's taking care of people yeah if you see someone that is being creepy or acting in a way that makes you or other people uncomfortable report them and if you see someone who is in a situation that needs help let somebody know if you are the kind of person that is in a position to be able to make that break cool do it look i if i see someone standing there in a conversation that is clearly making them uncomfortable i'm their new best friend i've known them their whole life and they are coming with me until they're comfortably away from wherever they need to be but if you're not willing to roll that way that's fine let somebody else know don't don't make someone else suffer yep if you if some woman rolls up, throws her arms around me, hey sweetie, how you doing? You know what? We've been friends for forever. Yep. And you are good with me until we can get you where you need to be. Yep. I I don't care. And finally, protect yourself and your identity. There's some shady <laughs> out there. Have a wallet, a purse, or whatever that has RFID blocking. You've got a crowd of people. It's not the '90s, folks. Use a little common sense when it comes to protecting yourself. Get your wallet stolen, too. Got to watch out. Don't sure. just whip your wallet out. 
put it back in your back pocket and expect someone not to be noticing that. Don't ever have it in your back pocket. Never. It should always be in your front pocket. There you go. Remember, you're here to have fun, make friends, and do something awesome. Make the most of it, and most importantly, be safe. Yeah, no, have fun, but don't die. And don't die. That's also important, too. So there you have it. Just a couple of rules that we like, some tips and tricks that you could use so that you can have an amazing convention this year. I hope you guys have fun. Get out there. Go meet some new friends. Do something that you've never done before and enjoy the convention. Yeah, we'd love to see you. Yeah, come hang out with us. Any questions or comments, hit us up at Goblin's Corner on Twitter. Did you enjoy this podcast? We've got a whole convention more. Subscribe to it on your favorite player, YouTube and Twitch. Click the five stars and give us a review on iTunes Podchaser. And on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button. It helps get our show in front of more people and it feeds the hungry algorithm. It's currently waiting in line. A long, long queuing line that will never end. Indeed. That's all the time we have for tonight. Once again, my name is Eric. And I'm Matt. We'll see you next time. Good night, folks. The Goblin's Corner is written and produced by Eric Holden and Matt Staples. Show song by the mighty D20. This is a subterranean production. Basic.